Hi everybody and welcome to my uh, ambient occlusion tutorial. Uh, I want to show you a few very important settings of ambient occlusion and show that ambient occlusion would be a very, very very powerful tool that uh, can be used in many many cases. For example, we can use it for some product shots, we can use it for interior lightning, we can use it for exterior lightning, we can use it in animations, uh, we can use it uh, as a little dirt shader. We can use it in many cases and many exa and many scenes I think and I really use it very very often and really, it's a really powerful tool but you must always set all parameters correctly and in according to your scenes. Okay, we will show how ambient occlusion works and we will show what's really important uh, if you want to get really nice and uh, correct the results. First, what's ambient occlusion? Ambient occlusion um, belongs uh, to global illumination effects, but it's a bit different effect to other effects and to other global illumination effects because ambient occlusion itself always make our scene darker. It does not illuminate our scene uh, like other uh, global illumination effects, uh, for example, radiance cache or photon maps or something like that, or brute force method, because all these methods always do our scenes brighter. It add light to our scenes, but global uh, ambient occlusion itself always makes our scene darker. It's a really different attempt and uh, choose we must do or prepare our scene always a bit different to uh, settings that will use global illumination, standard global illumination uh, effect. Okay, first we must understand uh, we must understand how ambient occlusion effect works. I have a very simple scene for it. Okay, it's my scene. It's very very simple. You can see, it contains one sphere and these three, these two walls and this floor. That's all. And here is no light. I have used a standard default light that's placed to our camera settings, to our camera position, and we can try to activate uh, embed occlusion effect first and try render. It makes our corners darker. Yes, as we said before, ambient occlusion always makes co scene darker. We can imagine it as a, a multiplier layer in a Photoshop file. It's almost the same. We can always reverse, uh, for example, this uh, gradient or adjust colors, but it will be always the same. It will always be a layer that's multiplied with our scene with our, with our picture. And choose this effect always makes our scene darker. If we know this through, we must uh, adjust our scene and adjust a lightning, of course. Choose uh, because embed occlusion does our scene makes our scene darker, we must illuminate the scene a bit, we can, we can, we must uh, prepare it a bit brighter. Uh, it's very, very easy in case you know how to do it. We have two options. We can use standard lights or we can use a special light or environmental object. I usually use lights. Create a new light and turn on ambient illumination option. This option turn off a diffuse option and usually I turn off specular option as well. We can try render picture again. It's absolutely different result than before. You can see this part looks very very flat but we can see these corners with no problem and it proves a bit strange, but we can see a uh, geometry of our scene a bit. Uh, for a correct result, we must adjust ambient occlusion settings, of course, but 
at the moment we must explain something about diffuse effect. Turn. Oh, it's okay. I will continue. Uh, turn off your ambi uh, ambient light, and I will use uh, a doodle tool for explain of uh, the diffuse effect. Okay, how works a diffuse effect in standard lights? We can imagine it as uh, some surface and this surface has normals and here is light and this light illuminates the surface by these rays. And these rays are always compared with normals of the surface and this angle controls diff uh, light um, illumination of the surface itself and it's the diffuse. But in case we will turn ambient illumination option on, diffuse itself is turned off. But this special light can add a special illumination level to our scene, and this level will be uh, darker. Will be darker uh, by ambient occlusion settings. But we must adjust the things itself, of course. Turn light object on again and go back to render settings. First, color. Color is set by gradient and we can adjust gradient, of course, and set colors, etc. etc. But it's not so important for us because we can imagine a main occlusion effect as an effect that simulates uh, some very soft shadows in our scene. Choose, we can usually leave this color on this default state. Maybe we can adjust this color, for example, to some very, very low uh, saturation level. Something like that. Very small saturation, of course. Really. That's all. What's very important is maximum ray length and minimum ray length. It's usually set to zero, but the maximum ray length is very, very important value. And this value must be always set in according to your scene. In case, for example, you have an interior settings and the interior uh, itself is, has height something around 260 centimeters. For example, in this case, I usually set maximum ray length value to 320, something like that. It's always set a bit higher than uh, a maximum height level of my uh, of my main object of our main module in my scene. Why you will see it later, I think. But uh, in our scene has sphere radius 100. Its diameter is something like, uh, is 200, and is a reason I will set maximum ray length value to 350, for example. You will see it will be absolutely different result than before. Yes, because this sphere works together with our walls and with our floor, and uh, geometry of a scene looks much better than before. But these corners are too dark, and these uh, gradients are too too dark and it looks like dirt. It not, doesn't look as a geometry, but it looks like dirt, I think. It doesn't look nice for me, of course. You can like it. <laughs> okay. What's really, really important is the dispersion value. How it works. Dispersion value works like these arrows. And these arrows can uh, show maximum ray length as well. It will explain uh, ambient occlusion, this uh, this demonstration, I think. 
because in case you will set maximum rail length value to higher value it makes our race longer. These rays are not set, uh, sent from light. These rays are sent from the surface itself. It's again absolutely different attempt to global illumination to other global illumination effects. And one of them, the shorter of them, will hit a different surface and this the short ray will be transferred to color and the color will be multiplied with the surface. That's very, very easy. Okay, what's the dispersion? Dispersion value will control this shape in case it will be lower The angle of the dispersion will be reduced as well, but uh, this can reduce in special effect. In case it will be set to 100, These rays can hit one of them, the shot of them, will hit this floor. But in case it's it will be set dispersion value will be set to fifty. It can reduce in the effect that all rays will will be will not hit a, an other surface and it will be a, it will result in much more contrast picture. You can show it. You can see. It's absolutely different result. But uh, it's... Oh, sorry, but... Uh, it will produce a picture much faster. But it's, it's not nice, I think. Okay. Uh, set dispersion value to 100 again. Accuracy uh, control samples because ambient occlusion is classic samples, sample effect. Uh, and accuracy controls uh, distribution of minimum samples and maximum samples. Usually it's better to set higher minimum and maximum samples than adjust or uh, than uh, set accuracy value to higher, really high value, I think. And contrast. It's absolutely very, very, very important uh, value for us. Set max minimum samples to 20, for example, maximum samples to 200 or something like that, and set contrast value to higher value, 50 for example, and try scene again. It does not look nice, I think, but we can adjust contrast value and set it and use a negative value as well. Use some like edit. Oh, it's almost perfect, I think. It's Really, a very important uh, parameter for me: the contrast. Because in case you will set contrast to negative value, you will get a really nice and very clean and very soft result. And in case you will get, you will you will get a soft result. And this in this case uh, does not look ambient occlusion as a as a dirt, but it looks as a uh, as an interaction of our scene and is very important for us. This is perfect. We can go back to our duck scene and we can study the scene itself. Okay, 
the settings are almost the same like uh, uh, that we have seen already in our previous scene. Contrast is set to negative value, maximum minimum samples are almost the same. Only two standard lights I usually use uh, are lights with other shadows. And the result looks nice for me. Okay, that's all in this part. We will continue in the second part and I will show you other options that uh, can do our effect of our, our ambient occlusion effect much, much better and more realistic.